today I'm going to share with you three new incredible tools in Photoshop that will change the way you edit. You and I agree that the camera raw filter is one of the most powerful tools in Photoshop. But if you have a document like this with a ton of layers, here's the original one, here's some color grading, some text, some shadows, there's so much going on right there. If you wanted to apply camera raw here, you would have to merge everything first. So with the topmost layer selected, we would press Control, Alt, Shift and E, merge everything there, then go to filters again, convert for smart filters, hit OK and then go to filter again, camera raw filter. There it is. And this would be a complicated process. For instance, let's say you wanted to apply some grain, you increase it from here, you increase the size, hit OK. But what if you now want to change the text? You would have to delete this again, change the text, making it very, very complicated. And so recently, Photoshop has added a few incredible features that bring some of the functions of camera, all of those wonderful sliders, directly into layers as adjustment layers. So giving you full absolute flexibility, non-destructive abilities, you can apply it directly to a bunch of layers. You don't have to create stem visible layers. Let's check this out. By the way, one of them is in the main version of Photoshop, while the rest two is still in beta. But I'm going to show you all three. When you open Photoshop 2026, the regular version, if you click on the adjustment layer icon, you will see a brand new adjustment layer called Color and Vibrance, which gives you access to temperature and tint and other settings, which was available only inside of Camera Raw. So if you wanted to correct the white balance, you can simply click on the eyedropper, for example, and click on an area which should have been neutral. I'm going to guess her dress, and there you go. Her skin is neutral. All that green is gone. Here's the before. Here's the after. And of course, with layers, you have additional advantage with masking. So I can add one more color and vibrance adjustment layer. And maybe for this one, we will increase the temperature and the tint a bit more. Maybe a little bit more right there. And that's just for the body so that it matches with that of the face. So select the mask, press Ctrl or Command I to invert the mask. Now let's take the brush, white as the foreground color, just paint over her body. And just like that, we have matched it. You can always go back to the settings by double clicking on the symbol of the adjustment layer and then you can adjust it to your liking. I'm going to keep it possibly this way and adjust this one. Maybe increase the saturation to match that with that of the face and there you go. With just that, here's the before, here's the after. And you didn't even have to merge all the layers, go to camera, use masking inside of that, bring it back, smart filters, so complicated that way. This, so darn simple. You can also use this creatively to add some more punch to your photos. For example, in this case, I want to make it warmer. So let's create a color and vibrance adjustment layer. Let's take the temperature to the right hand side. There you go. Instantly, it becomes so much more punchier. You can also make it more magenta-ish by increasing the tint, just like so. And of course, you have all those vibrance controls as well. Now with all of those settings, let's say you didn't want it in the shadows and you wanted to limit this to the highlights. What do we do to do that? Double click on the right hand side of this layer and take it away from the dark areas of the layer that lies under it. In other words, the underlying layer. If you take the slider from the left to the right, as you can see, it's going away from the dark areas, just like so. But the transition is very, very harsh. So hold the Alt key or the Option key, click on the slider to break it apart. And the more far apart you make it, the transition becomes smoother. Let us take it to possibly 124, that seems nice, hit OK. And just with that touch of color, here's the before and here is the after. Now the next two adjustment layers are incredibly awesome as well, but they're right now only available in the beta version of Photoshop. I have high hopes that they will make it to the main version soon. Till then, let us see how they work. If you don't have Photoshop beta yet, you can install it directly from your Creative Cloud desktop app. Simply go to apps right there, beta at the top and install Photoshop beta from right there. The second adjustment, if you click on the adjustment layer icon, you will find clarity and dehaze. The same controls inside of Lightroom or Camera, you have it directly as an adjustment layer. So cool. You can increase the clarity in images like this, makes it so much more dramatic. Similarly with dehaze, this is for decreasing the haze, but sometimes it creates that incredible contrast that brings out the impact. So I'm going to keep it at these values. Here's the before. Here's the after. Let us take a look at this particular image. Again, click on the adjustment layer icon, choose clarity and dehaze. Keep in mind it's only available in Photoshop beta, not in the regular version of Photoshop. It's a separate app. Similarly right here, I would increase the dehaze to make all the fog and the haziness go away. Maybe 44 and also increase the clarity. 
this looks so good. And of course, you can use it with masking. If you only wanted it, maybe in this area, you can select the mask, pick a gradient, and maybe draw in a gradient like so. So much more freedom right here. You can use the flexibility of layers and combine that with the awesome controls from Camera Raw. Now, one of my favorite effects for a cinematic feel is adding grain. There are so many ways to add grain in Photoshop, but the one in Camera Raw gives you so much more flexibility with size, roughness. And right now, coming back to our very first example, you can apply it as an adjustment layer. Click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose grain. By the way, you want to make sure that the topmost layer is selected so that when you create the grain adjustment layer, it is created above it. And similarly, just as we have in Camera Raw, you have amount, size, and roughness. So cool. Let's zoom in and I'm going to increase the amount a bit too much, maybe 64. And you can control the size from here, 58, and the roughness. Let's keep it around 60. And this adds a nice grain to the entire photo. And again, if you think it is too much, you can of course play with opacity, but also just open up the properties by double clicking on the symbol and decrease or increase the amount to your liking. Now, there is one caveat here. It's not exactly the same as Camera Raw. Let me prove it to you. If we were to zoom in, and let's say we increased the amount all the way high, and we increased the size all the way high, the sharpness of the original image stays the same. But the Camera Raw filter creates an effect that is a touch more realistic. Let's turn this off for now. I'm gonna create a stamp visible layer at the top by pressing Ctrl, Alt, Shift, and E. Nothing is happening because this layer is turned off, so we need to create a blank layer at the top and then press Ctrl, Alt, Shift, and E. Now let's go to Filter and again, do not forget, Convert for Smart Filter so we can change the values later. Now if we were to go to Filter and then Camera Raw Filter, scroll down to the Effects section, here you will find Grain. Now I'm going to zoom into the same level. If we increase the grain all the way and increase the size, you notice how it blurs the image as well as we change the size, just like so, giving it a touch more realistic feel with all the grain. Maybe you like this effect, maybe you don't, but this was just to show you that the grain controls inside of Camera Raw is different from the adjustment layer. Let's hit OK for now. This is how it is with the Camera Raw filter. If we turn it off and turn on the grain adjustment layer and go to the properties by double clicking here, no matter how much you increase the size, the size of the grain does increase, but it doesn't blur the image. So that's that. But I like it that way for many projects. And of course, you can add grain creatively. For example, in this case, I wanted to add some texture to the background. So simply click on the adjustment layer icon, choose grain, and you can add a bit of grain just for the background. But right now it is on the subject as well. So what do we do? We turn this off, select the subject layer, just so that the grain doesn't disturb the subject. Then select any of these three tools. Once you do, at the top you will see Select Subject. Click on that. This should select the subject, but the problem is it's also considering the square in the background as the subject. No worries, press Ctrl or Command D. Select the Object Selection tool. At the top you'll see Select People. Simply click on that. Click on this person, Entire Person, hit Apply. There you go. Now turn on this grain layer, select the mask, make sure the foreground color is black, press Alt Backspace or Option Delete, Control or Command D, and that effect goes away from that of the subject and is now only in the background. If you want a little bit of grain back into the subject, you can open up the properties of the mask by selecting the mask, clicking on the properties. If you don't see properties, go to Window. You want to make sure properties is checked and then just decrease the density. Density is like opacity for the mask. If the density was zero, it will be like there was no mask. If the density is at 100, the mask is there. So if you want something in between with a little bit of noise on the subject, right now there is no noise, there is a little more noise, a little more, a little more, so you can choose how much noise you want back into the subject. Let us pick 72. This works perfectly for this example. So there are so many creative ways you can work with all of these adjustment layers and I sure do hope that the rest of the two come to the main version of Photoshop. Now apart from these adjustment layers, I really do wish Photoshop also brings the sharpness or the detail section from inside of Camera Raw as an adjustment layer as well. If you were the developer of Photoshop, what other properties or adjustments would you bring as adjustment layers? 
let us talk about it in the comments. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you my friend don't miss any other future tips, tricks or tutorials. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next one. Till then stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.